Hello friends, it's Lisa and today I'm going to be chatting about the books that I read in February. I'm going to be doing my February wrap-up. I read 11 books this month, so a little bit more than what I read last month. Again, another month of a lot of really solid reads. I have a good amount of four stars, some five stars. I do have some that are below that. We did have some disappointing reads this month, but overall still a pretty good reading month, which I'm happy about. I feel like my reading so far this year is already off to a much better start than it was last year. But yeah, let's just hop into the wrap-up. Let's start chatting about the books that I read in February and what I thought of them. So the first book that I picked up this month was Flawless by Elsie Silver and I did do a whole vlog reading Romances from Kindle Unlimited so I'm gonna link that down below because I'll probably go a lot more in depth on my thoughts in that video if you want to hear them but this one is the first book in a series, a new series by Elsie Silver. I know she has a couple other series but this is the one that I've seen a lot of people talking about so I wanted to give it a try. This first book in the series I end up rating three and a half stars. You're following Rhett and Summer and Rhett is a professional bull rider, and I can't help but think yeehaw every time I say that. <laughs> But Rhett is a professional bull rider and he ends up getting in a bit of a scandal which ends up kind of causing some problems with one of his sponsors. So his manager ends up hiring a PR agent for him and Summer is the one that's hired to be his PR agent and Summer is actually the daughter of Rhett's manager. And so she ends up moving in with Rhett and kind of following him along on these bull riding competitions. She moves in with him though at his family's ranch so she gets to know Rhett's brothers and his dad and it kind of has that like small town vibe as well. But I really enjoyed this. I had a really good time with it. I especially liked the scenes where they were kind of back home at the ranch and they were spending time with Rhett's family and in this kind of small town and some of the scenes there I thought that that was really fun. But I also liked the bull riding competition aspect as well which I was kind of surprised to find that so interesting but I thought it was really fun. I thought it was a really fun dynamic seeing them like on the road together and her like showing up to these competitions and watching him and supporting him and yeah it was just really fun. I think my biggest thing was like the third act kind of conflict. I didn't love. I feel like Rhett as a character was a little bit immature at certain points so it was just kind of annoying to read. <laughs> like I feel like they both kind of did and said things that they didn't actually mean and it just, I don't know, it wasn't like my favorite thing to read about. So I liked the characters in this first book in the series but I didn't absolutely love them as much as I maybe loved future characters in this series which we'll get to. <laughs> but overall I had a good time and it really introduced me to a new series that I was excited to continue on with. So yeah, read Flawless and gave that three and a half stars. The next book I ended up reading in the month of February was Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare. And you may perhaps recall in my January wrap-up I said, depending on how Chain of Thorns goes, the Last Hour series might become my favorite Shadowhunter series. Well, <laughs> I still think Chain of Gold and Chain of Iron are some of my favorite Shadowhunter books just by themselves, but this book definitely made this not my favorite series. I did give this four stars, so definitely not a bad rating, but I definitely was kind of disappointed with this book. I did do a hour and a half long vlog on this book, so if you want to know all of my thoughts, I'll have that linked below, but that did have spoilers in it, so I'll give some like non-spoilery thoughts. I still like this book. I still think there were parts of this book and certain storylines and certain character arcs that I found very satisfying. I still adore these characters within this series, so just being with them again was just great to read, and I don't know, like I did have a good time. Mm, did I have a good time? It did cause me a lot of stress, and there were a lot of painful moments, but I still like enjoyed my experience reading this book. I do feel like the pacing of this book was really where I had a lot of issues. I feel like there were certain things that were given a lot of page time that didn't need as much page time as it got, and then there were certain things I feel like were brushed over very quickly and we should have spent a little bit more time with those things. And also I don't think I really said this in my Chain of Thorns vlog because I wasn't sure how to like articulate why I was feeling this way, so I kind of was like, I feel like it doesn't mean much when I say it. This book felt off to me. It felt a little weird. The vibes were off, and I was like, I don't know why that's happening. I couldn't figure it out, but through watching some other people's vlogs on reading this book, talking to some people about this book, I kind of realized that Cassandra Clare did say that she wanted to take a break after finishing this book as she should. She wanted to, I think, focus on her health, both physical and mental health. I don't know if she's feeling a bit burnt out, which is totally understandable. <laughs> I can't imagine putting out so many like thick Shadowhunter books consecutively pretty much every single year and not feeling burnt out, so I totally respect her taking a break and I'm glad that she is prioritizing that. However, I feel like this book, you can tell, that she needed a break. You can kind of tell that she was feeling burnt out, which is so disappointing because imagine if she had written this when she wasn't feeling that way. Again, I don't fault her for feeling that way. I think it's so important to prioritize your mental health and everything, but it's just, I feel like reading this book, you could tell 
that she was in need of a break, you know? I don't know. I end up giving it four stars. I do feel like my rating is may be generous, but I also like the idea of lowering my rating physically causes me pain. So it's a four star, but I have a lot of mixed feelings on it. So yeah, I definitely like had things I was disappointed by with this book, but also I did like certain things. I found certain things satisfying, like I was saying, and James and Cordelia, I just love them so much. <laughs> and also I will say I read this book towards the beginning of the month and I don't think a day has gone by in the month of February where I haven't thought about this book and about these characters and have just been so emotional when thinking about them. So like it definitely had an impact on me. I still enjoyed certain parts of it. I just found it a little bit disappointing. So next I ended up picking up Honey and Spice by Bolu Babalola. This is a romance book following Kiki who has this um, like radio show and the whole radio show is kind of her giving advice to the women on her campus about like relationships and guys and all of that. And on one one particular show she realizes that a lot of people are starting to kind of write into this radio show about this one specific guy and she's like hey let's stay away from him like warning the women of this campus to kind of stay away from him but then because of certain situations Kiki ends up kissing said guy that she is warning people to stay away from and his name is Malachi. That kind of causes a bit of an issue because she just warned people to stay away from him. Now she's caught kissing him. So the two of them enter this like fake dating situation, but the two of them will both get something out of it. She will be able to kind of save the reputation of her radio show and introduce this new kind of concept on her radio show with him. But he also is trying to create this film about love and relationships and wants her help. And I love a book about fake dating. So when I saw this book had this and I had seen a lot of really great reviews, of this book I knew I had to read it. I just knew and I ended up really really enjoying this. I gave this five stars. I feel like from chapter one I was interested in these characters. I was invested. I was having a good time. I feel like the dynamic between them but also just like all of the characters in general it was just very fun and very funny. I feel like the banter between Malachi and Kiki was so fun to read and it wasn't only the banter between Malachi and Kiki that I thought was funny. Like a lot of the other side characters I thought were also really funny and I really liked a lot of them as well. And like I was saying I do love fake dating but sometimes I feel like the way fake dating can be set up it's like only one of them can really get something out of it you're kind of wondering like why is the other person getting involved but I feel like the way this fake dating kind of situation was set up it made a lot of sense for the both of them I also really liked the way this relationship kind of developed throughout the book as well because at first they really didn't get along obviously she went on her radio show and warned everyone to stay away from him so it's like there was a bit of tension and a bit of you know bickering at the beginning of this kind of fake dating arrangement but then eventually they evolve and become friends and then eventually they start to have these feelings for one another and I just thought it was really natural and done really well and Malachi like as a love interest he is the only man ever. I was obsessed <laughs> with him. I just loved him. He was so great. Also, like what I was saying with the side characters being really funny, I really liked a lot of the side characters. I liked a lot of the friendships that our characters had, but also the friendships that developed throughout this book. Like Kiki kind of starts this book with one best friend and kind of throughout the book you see her kind of address some problems that she's had in the past that have prevented her from wanting to be friends with people or other people and that issue with that trust there. But then you you see her become friends with other people and you see this like friendship group develop and that was really fun to see as well. I think my one thing that I didn't love about this book and this is just like a me thing and I actually like I didn't really mind the way it was done in this book so that's why I gave it five stars but I'm not the biggest fan of like a big grand gesture at the end of a book because it just makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> if it were me I would want to like crawl under a table or crawl under the covers. I would just not want to be there because I'd be too many people looking at me but I think it can be cute and I think as far as grand gestures go, the one at the end of this book I think was done well and I didn't mind it. I actually really liked it. So overall, really enjoyed it. Had a great time. I think the third act conflict made sense. I just, everything about this book was so good. The romance, the characters, the friendships, the like actual like conflicts within the book, not just like the third act conflict, but the struggles these characters are having throughout the book as well. It was just, it was just so good. Everything about it, so good. The next book I picked up was Heartless by Elsie Silver. This is the second book in the series I started earlier on in the month. Flawless was the first one. This was the second one. This is the Chestnut Springs series. I always want to say Chestnut Hill, and that's not right. <laughs> this one is definitely my favorite in this series so far. I ended up giving it four and a half stars. I really liked it and like the more I think about it the more I'm like do I just give it a five? Like this book started out as a four star then I bumped it to a four and a half. I'm kind of thinking it might end up being a five eventually. <laughs> but in this book in the series you're following Cade who is Rhett from the first book, his brother, and then we also have Willa who is Summer 
from the first books, her best friend. And Kate has a son named Luke, who I think is about seven years old, and he's looking for a new nanny for him. Kate is kind of the brother that works the most on their family ranch, and during the summer he has a lot of long days, so he kind of needs someone to help take care of Luke during the summer. So Summer ends up offering her best friend Willa up for the job, and Kate at first is very reluctant about it, but then he sees how much Willa and Luke kind of instantly connect, and he just kind of gives her the job because no one else was really good enough up until that point. So she ends up moving in with him and taking care of his son. And this one, like I said, I really, really enjoyed. I liked it a lot more than the first one. I liked Kate and Willa as characters a lot more. I just found their personalities really fun because it's definitely like Grumpy Sunshine kind of vibes, which is another one of my favorite tropes. So it just kind of makes the dynamic between the two of them really fun. I also really liked Luke, who was the uh, seven-year-old son. He was really fun to read about, and I really liked the dynamic between both him and Kate, who is his dad, but also the dynamic between him and Willa and how cute that was to read about and how they all like became this little family. I also like that this one was set more so at the ranch and within this small town. It kind of had more of the small town vibes that I liked from the first one. And because we were also at the ranch more, we saw more of Kate's family. So we still saw Rhett and Summer. And then we also saw, you know, the other brother that they have as well as their dad and their dad, Harvey. His character is like one of my favorite characters to read about. He's so funny. <laughs> but I just really enjoyed reading about this family and the dynamic between all the brothers and their dad. And it just really really is fun to read about. And then also when the kind of third act conflict within this book came up, I was a little nervous because I didn't really love how the characters acted in the first book, but I feel like the characters within this book, when that third act conflict came up, they acted a lot more mature. They acted like adults <laughs> and they just like communicated about how they were feeling. Even if they weren't sure how they were feeling, they kind of communicated that to each other. And so I just feel like they were very self-aware. And so it made it like less frustrating to read the third act conflict because they were just like very understanding of what the other was feeling and they just communicated about it. So yeah, again, really enjoyed this one. I gave it 4.5 stars, but like I said, it's kind of slowly creeping up and maybe eventually I'll give it a five star. I don't know. <laughs> the next book I ended up finishing in February was actually a reread. It was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And this was my second time reading the book, but my first time reading it with the audiobook. The audiobook, I know everyone says it, but it's genuinely so good. <laughs> it has a full cast, which really just adds to the whole experience because this is a book that's told in like interview style format. You're following this band, Daisy Jones and the Six. You're getting an interview from them years after the band has broken up. But the band was really popular in the 70s, so you're seeing them kind of tell the story of how the band came to be, how they got to be so successful, and kind of why they very abruptly broke up. And like I said, it's told in this interview style format, so it's just really interesting. It almost feels like a nonfiction. I applaud Taylor Jenkins Reid so much because she is always able to create characters that feel so real. It seems like this is a real band that really existed. But I love that this book is told in that interview style format because it almost has these like unreliable narrators. You'll have characters kind of recounting this one specific moment or this event that happened and they're both saying different things of what actually happened. So as a reader you're kind of like, hmm, clearly one of them is not being truthful. Maybe they're both not being truthful. Like why would they lie? What really happened? And as you continue on throughout the book you start to like get more pieces to the puzzle and you start to figure out what may have actually really happened or why they may have lied in that moment. And I just think it's so well done. And I've also like, I've read this book before. This is my second time reading it. So I kind of knew certain things throughout reading, like why certain things were happening or like I just anticipated certain things. But there was one thing that I forgot about. And when you find out about that, I literally gasped. <laughs> I was like, I've read this book before, but I became the Barbie meme of like, why am I gasping? I knew that already. <laughs> but even though there were things I forgot about this book, there were things I remembered, I still feel like the impact of the ending of this book was just still there for me. There was a point where like someone flipped a switch and I instantly was just sobbing. Like I was just sitting there listening to the audiobook and the next moment, tears everywhere. I was a mess. <laughs> but yeah, I absolutely loved it. Obviously gave it five stars. This is one of my favorite books, so I'm not surprised. But there was a part of me that was a little nervous rereading it because I was like, what if I just don't like it as much as I did the first time? But I did. I think I may have even liked it more the second time around. Obviously there were things that weren't so surprising the second time around, but I don't know. I feel like I just appreciated certain things about this book more the second time around. And I just think it's incredible. The audiobook was really great. So if you haven't checked it out yet at this point, I definitely recommend. And I'm 
I'm just so excited for the TV show. I think it's going to be so good. What we've seen, like the teasers and the trailers and all of that, it just seems really promising. So I'm really excited for it. Glad I did a reread and glad I gave it five stars. All right, the next book that I read is one that I was pretty disappointed by and didn't really enjoy. And you know what? I've had a pretty good reading year so far this year. There had to be one that I wasn't going to love at some point. So it just finally happened. But I ended up reading Talk Flirty to Me by Livy Hart and unfortunately I really didn't like this. I gave this two stars. So the description that we get of this book, like on Goodreads or wherever it may be, it says that we're following Piper and Sam and Sam is best friends with Piper's brother but the two of them do not get along but Sam is kind of the only one that can help Piper get this job of narrating an audiobook. So the two of them get this job to narrate this audiobook together. However, it's a like steamy fantasy romance book, which is not what they were expecting. So the two of them are going to be recording this like smutty audiobook together, even though they do not get along. And that's kind of what the description of the book is online, but that is kind of where one of my issues is, is that I feel like the description of this book is pretty misleading. <laughs> so one thing about this book is the reason why Sam and Piper don't get along. And you find this out in like chapter one, so it's not, I wouldn't say it's a spoiler. I actually think it should be something you know. Because if I had known this going into this book, I don't think I would have read it. The reason they don't get along is because they dated in high school. So this is a second chance romance, which I'm learning is not my favorite trope, unless it's the parent trap. <laughs> and kind of everything surrounding their breakup in high school was very much based in miscommunication, which like doesn't really bother me because it's like they were literally teenagers. So I think it's understandable. And then you also find out like the reason why the breakup was initiated in the first place. And that's also kind of a silly reason. But again, they were teenagers. So I'm not like too mad about that. However, it's been seven years since they broke up in high school. She is now like Piper is now my age. I think he's like a year older than her. So they're like my age and they still like refuse to communicate about what happened. So it's just like really frustrating to read because Piper just refuses to listen to him. She refuses to have this conversation with him, even though Sam is like best friends with Piper's brother. He's at these family events with them and also like they're now starting to work together because they're recording this audiobook together yet she still refuses to communicate with him about anything and it's just it's really not that fun to read about and then also like I liked Sam as a character like I didn't feel like super in love with him by any means but I liked his character however when discussing at one point they were discussing their like breakup in high school he quotes Ross Geller from Friends he quotes the we were on a break thing and if a man is quoting Ross Geller and using Ross's logic, that's a red flag. <laughs> so yeah, the whole like second chance romance and everything that came with that, the miscommunication from when they were in high school, but even more so when they were adults, like in the current day, while this book is happening and them just refusing to communicate about their issues was just not super fun to read. Plus, like I said, the second chance romance thing is just not my favorite. So I just wasn't super invested in their relationship in general. But like where the kind of description of this book feels a bit misleading, you kind of get the idea that like the whole book is going to be them recording this audiobook together and them having to work together and them like developing feelings for each other while they're having to record this audiobook, right? No, <laughs> there's like barely any scenes of them recording this audiobook together. And I get that to a point, it would probably get repetitive, but there are literally two scenes of them recording this audiobook together. And the first one happens like over halfway through the book. So it's just like, I don't know, I expected the audiobook thing to be more of the premise and play more of a role. I feel like the audiobook thing and them narrating this audiobook together was only serving the purpose of causing conflict in the 50 other things that were going on in this book, because that was another thing. There was a lot going on in this book. <laughs> we have Piper and Sam's like shared history and their like current relationship and them not communicating about anything. And then the fact that Piper's brother is friends with Sam, but Sam and Piper's brother, whose name I don't remember, so this is gonna get confusing, but they like stopped being friends when Piper and Sam broke up. So now they're reconnecting. And so now Sam's like invited to family things, but Piper's family is still mad at Sam for breaking Piper's heart. But also Piper's mom is pregnant with her like 50th kid because they have a lot of kids. So there's like baby showers and gender reveals. And then there's also like a moment where there's a complication with her pregnancy. So like trigger warnings for that, it ends up being okay, but something to like know about going into it. But then we also have Sam who has like 50 jobs. He's, you know, doing the audiobook thing, but he's also a firefighter and he's also running for mayor. It's <laughs> there's just too much happening. <laughs> and like the firefighter thing, like you see him at his job one time. And then you also see him be the only person that's smart enough to grab a fire extinguisher when there was like a small fire in Piper's house. 
that's it. <laughs> I honestly forgot Sam was even a firefighter until it started playing a role in the conflict. Like, there was just too much happening, even though the premise focused on, you know, describing this audiobook narrating thing, like, that was so pushed aside for everything else that was going on, and I just feel like certain plot things and where the priority of the story was focused, it should have been shifted a bit. It just, I don't know, it was just so weird what this book focused on. So yeah, didn't love the second chance romance vibes, did not really care for Sam and Piper than their relationship, like, I just did not care. I didn't really like Piper as a character, and I just felt like there was too much going on not enough focus on the audiobook narrating, too much focus on the 50 other things that were going on in this book. Like I said, I did like Sam as a character, but I didn't feel like super strongly about him, but I liked him. And also there were some funny moments in the book. There were some cute moments. There were some funny moments that felt kind of forced, but there were some genuine funny moments, some cute moments, but honestly, like, there was just a lot that just did not work for me with this book, which is so unfortunate. I really wanted to like this book, especially because my friend Brittany likes this book. She's also friends with the author, which was just like too much pressure. There were so many moments in this book where I was like, I should just DNF this. That would make everything so much easier. And I should have listened to myself, but unfortunately, I didn't, and I gave it two stars, and I'm very sad about it. The next book I read was Powerless by Elsie Silver, the third and most recent book in the Chestnut Springs series, and this one I gave four stars. You're following Sloane and Jasper, and Sloane is actually the cousin to Rhett and Cade, who we see in the first two books, as well as Bo. They have another brother that we just haven't seen as much of in the series so far, and Jasper, when he is a teenager, kind of gets taken in by this family, by Bo mostly, because of some things that happened with his own family. So when they were younger, when they were teenagers, Sloane kind of develops this like teenage crush on Jasper and everyone kind of knows about it, but no one really takes it too seriously. But now like years later, they're both adults. Sloane still kind of has these feelings for Jasper, but she's kind of just accepted that's never going to happen. So she's actually engaged to somebody else. And the guy that she's engaged with is a jerk. So on the day of her wedding, she actually becomes a runaway bride. And Jasper is the one that kind of helps get her out of that situation. But then we also find out that Bo, who like I I said is the younger brother to Cade and Rhett who we see in the first two books. He is a part of the military but he's gone missing and Jasper is like really struggling with that and so the two of them, both Jasper and Sloane, have these things going on in their lives that they're just ready to kind of run away from and ignore for as long as possible so they get this opportunity to go on this little road trip and that's kind of it. There really isn't much of a plot to this book. <laughs> this is mainly just following Jasper and Sloane, their relationship developing and changing from being friends to potentially more but also them dealing with the current issues in their life, but also some issues from their past as well. Jasper has a lot of trauma due to his family and things that happened in the past, so you see him kind of confront that throughout this book, and you also see Sloane kind of confront some of her kind of problems as well, and I really liked the way that that was done. I also did like the relationship between Jasper and Sloane because it is a friends to lovers and they became friends like many years before we start seeing them in this book. I felt like we could have potentially felt like we were missing something, but I do feel like Elsie Silver did a good job of making us feel like we understood these characters and their dynamic and their friendship before really getting into this story and their dynamic changing. I do wish we had seen a little bit more development with their like romantic relationship. I feel like they went from being friends pining after each other to being together romantically kind of quickly. Like I wish we had just seen a little bit more of that, but other than that, I really enjoyed it. Plus he's a hockey player and she's a ballerina and I just happen to really love that dynamic. <laughs> you only see like a couple of games, like a couple of hockey games, and you only see like one performance that she does, but it's just still a fun dynamic and I just love it. So yeah, I really enjoyed this one and gave it four stars. Next, I read Mile High by Liz Tomford, another one that I gave four stars and read in that Kindle Unlimited vlog. This is also another hockey romance as well. We have Xanders, who is a player on the Chicago hockey team, and he kind of has this reputation of being like a bad boy, but it's kind of just like, it's not real. He knows that that reputation gets the team a lot of attention and gets people going to the game, so he kind of just keeps it up so that he will be re-signed and get a new contract with the Chicago team. And then we have Stevie, who is a flight attendant, and she is on the planes that fly this hockey team to and from their away games. And this book was, again, just really fun. I really liked the dynamic between these characters. I liked their personalities. I liked their banter. I also really liked the growth that these characters went through, the kind of arc that both of these characters had. 
had and the things that they kind of had to confront, whether that was trauma from their past or just like their own insecurities or whatever it may be. I really liked the things that these characters had to work through and grow through. I just like the way that the relationship developed and how they were so there for each other, how Stevie and Xanders were really there for each other through the things that they were struggling with and just like offered their support in any way that they could. I think my one thing is that this book is pretty long. Um, and it kind of felt like it. Like sometimes I have read books where, you know, they're pretty long, but it doesn't feel like that. Like you get so sucked in. Like for example, From Lukov with Love by Mariana Zapata is a romance that is pretty long, but I didn't even realize. Like it just was so good from start to finish and I was so invested that I didn't realize how long of a book it was. But this book I definitely noticed. Like there were points where I was like, okay, like this book is kind of going on for too long. I just want to get to certain things happening. So that was kind of my one issue. I just like recognized how long the book was. I was able to like while reading I was very aware of how long this book was but I don't know other than that I really did enjoy it. I liked the dynamic. I liked the characters. I liked a lot of the side characters and I'm excited to continue on with this series. I'm starting to remember why I stopped filming wrap-ups for so long because this has taken me so long to film. I've got myself a beverage to keep me going but anyway the next book that I read is That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon by Kimberly Lemming which is such a fun title and I give this one four and a half stars. I was pleasantly surprised by this book. This book you're following Cinnamon who one night is drunk and saves a demon and that demon's name is Fallon and basically Fallon tells her that this goddess that the humans have been worshipping for protecting them from the demons that's basically all a lie. Instead of being a goddess she's actually like this like undead witch. She has kind of enslaved all the demons and put them under this curse. So Fallon gets Cinnamon's help in traveling across the land to go on this quest to defeat this like undead witch. And this book was so much fun. I don't want to say like too much because it is a pretty short book. I think it's only like 140 pages. So I don't want to say too much in case I spoil too much for anyone, but I really enjoyed this. I really loved all the characters. I loved Fallon. I loved Cinnamon. I also loved seeing their relationship and how it it grew and evolved throughout the book and I also just really love like I think a quest and like a journey in a fantasy book. A lot of the side characters were really great. There was kind of this like found family aspect where they all kind of came together to help defeat this undead witch and obviously I really liked the romance. I went in knowing that it was going to focus a lot on the romance and I really enjoyed that part but the actual fantasy world and the world building and the plot were really intriguing and really well developed and so like this book as a whole was just like very well rounded. Like it just had everything I could ever want. I just had such a good time. It was cozy but it was also spicy and it was fun and the characters were great. It had found family which I wasn't anticipating at all which is like another one of my favorite tropes. There were just so many things about this that I loved so definitely had a good time with this. Wasn't expecting to love it as much as I did but I really did love it a lot. The next book that I read in February was Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson and I ended up giving this one four stars and I'm just gonna like quickly read the description of this book that you get on like Goodreads and everything because I feel like this is very much a character focused, character driven novel. It's not so much about the plot and I feel like the description that this book gives is the perfect way to describe it. So it says, two young people meet at a pub in southeast London. Both are black British, both won scholarships to private schools when they struggled to belong. Both are now artists. He's a photographer, she's a dancer, trying to make their mark in a city that by turn celebrates and rejects them. Tentatively, tenderly, they fall in love, but two people who seem destined to be together can still be torn apart by fear and violence. So it's kind of discussing the kind of black experience, the good things and the beauty that comes with that, but also the like trauma and exhaustion that comes with that as well while also reading about this relationship, how they go from being friends to falling in love and the kind of journey that that relationship goes on. And like I said, this is a very character driven novel. It very much focuses on these characters and their relationship, but also the kind of internal and external struggles that they face. But this book is very beautiful and very beautifully written. The writing is absolutely stunning. There were so many moments when I was reading this that I was highlighting quotes and I feel like this is the type of book that I would love to revisit and kind of dissect a little bit more what was being said because I feel like that was like why I didn't give it a full five stars and this is just a me thing where the writing was almost too descriptive and flowery and lyrical at points where I kind of didn't understand what the author was trying to say even though I could recognize that it was beautiful. I feel like I was missing the actual meaning but there were times where it was just really beautiful and the writing itself was just absolutely stunning so I did really like it and I also really loved reading about this relationship. I feel like the way this author wrote about these characters and 
moment what they were feeling and what they were experiencing and this connection that they shared was also very beautiful to read. I just really liked the way like love and relationships was described in this book. I definitely think the writing was like the strongest part of this book and what made me feel so strongly about certain things that were being discussed and talked about in this book. And I also really liked the way like music and art was described. I feel like everything just comes back to the way this book was written. This author has such a way with words in describing the like beauty but also the harsh realities of life especially as a black man just discussing the like trauma and exhaustion like I was saying that comes with that and there were just definitely some like more emotional and hard to read things and just like very upsetting things and frustrating things to read and I feel like the writing really put that in a perspective that was really powerful and very emotional. I don't know the writing was just incredible even like I said when there were moments where I was like it's so descriptive and flowery and lyrical that I was like it was almost a little too much for me but for the most part that was what made this book so special at the same time. But like I was saying earlier this is the type of book that I would love to like revisit at some point in the future and maybe like analyze a little bit more. It is the February pick for the 20-something book club so I'm excited to discuss it with them. And yeah, overall, it was a very like emotional, hard hitting, but also beautiful book. And I gave it four stars. Okay, finally, we have made it to the end. I have one more book to talk about, one more book I read this month, and that book was Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare. This is the second book in the Dark Artifices trilogy, and I can't really say too much about what this one is about. It's set like five years after the events of the Mortal Instruments series, so it kind of directly connects to that one. But you are following different characters. You see some different characters, some different places than you do in the Mortal Instruments series, and I give this five stars. Who's surprised? <laughs> This is my third time reading this book and it's just good every time. I don't know. I feel like within this series, even though it's not like my favorite series in the Shadow Winter world, I still really love it. I really like it because I think she does a really good job of balancing all the different aspects of this story and in this world. Like there's so much going on plot wise that there's a lot of political stuff going on, but then she also of course has the characters and all the relationships there and the angst and drama that comes with that. But I think she just does such a good job of balancing all of those things. I find where the Shadow Hunter world is at this point in the series how the events of the Moral Instruments have impacted the Shadowhunter world and just like all of the politics that kind of come with it. I find it very interesting and that definitely picks up a lot in the second book in the series. And also like my favorite characters from this series start to get a bit more page time, a bit more attention in the second book. So I also really love that because I love all the scenes that happen between them. Well, not all of them because some of them are sad. <laughs> like the ending of this book, it's still, I... I'm still mad at Cassandra Clare for the end of this book. I'm never gonna get over it, especially because when I read the Shadowhunter series and all of these books for the first time, I was a bit of a late bloomer. I started reading the Shadowhunter world back in 2016, but this was the book that I got caught up on. So I read Lady Midnight a few weeks later, Lord of Shadows came out. This is the book I had to wait for the first time for the next book in the series. I had to wait a year and a half for Queen of Air and Darkness. And if you've read this book, <laughs> it's probably like the worst wait from book to book that I've ever experienced. I was miserable. <laughs> I was so mad that that was when I decided to get caught up on the Shadowhunter world. It was really not great timing. As you can tell, I'm not bitter about it still or anything. <laughs> so yeah, I just, I really enjoy this book. I love everything that gets introduced in this book. I love where the plot and the politics go, but also there's a lot of drama with the characters. And like I said, we see some characters that I really love a lot more in this particular book. So there's just a lot of great things about it, except the ending still mad about it. <laughs> but that is it. Those are all 11 books that I read in the month of February. Finally we made it through. I've been filming this for hours. It's all coming back to me why I stopped filming wrap-ups. <laughs> but definitely let me know down below in the comments anything you read in February, any standouts, anything that you really loved. I'd love to hear that. But also if you've read any of these books that I mentioned, definitely let me know your thoughts and we can chat about them below. But that is going to be it for my February wrap-up. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!